And then my dad shot her. It was weird. I mean, really? Konnichiwa. Did she consent to being shot? No. <laughs> Mina-san, konnichiwa. Anyway, hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk to the Kiki. We got a long free party for you today. I'm Matt, your host, and joining me, as always, my co-hi, Ethan, what's up? Gombawa, Mina-san. I'm all right, brother. We got a fucking, uh, got a long pod ahead of us. All right, like I said, we're just going to get straight to it because we got a lot to talk about. Uh, basically, it's going to be a free putter series um, with uh, the first part being the rest of our reviews with a good majority of finales. Uh, part two is our fall awards. And part three is our top 10 along with our winter watch list. Oh, I didn't even I forgot about the winter watch list completely as well. Fuck, dude. Well, well fuck. <laughs> Well, you know, I have analysts. But that's basically what I read off of anyway. So yeah, yeah. I'm just going to read yeah. off the fucking website. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we have one. Yeah, once our fall stuff is over, I'm just going to switch over to that and have it up and ready for whenever. <laughs> anyway, good news, folks. Uh, we, our backlog is almost done. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank the fuck Christ. <laughs> arigato, Sean Coon. Yes, arigato, Sean. Uh, basically... Uh, all we have is last week's episode left. They didn't, uh, we just got to remind him, but he will do it tomorrow. Which means then, it should be up by, hopefully, at the latest Thursday as we record. Um, Thursday yeah. being the 30th, guys. Yeah. December 30th. And, and hopefully this free part will be up before our year and awards next week. Indeed. But um, uh, no news. Actually, we'll talk about one uh, odd taxi for those that watch it. You guys got confirmed for a movie on April 1st. That's it. <laughs> That's all the news we're giving you today. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else we had. Uh, oh, we got to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen blowing it out the water in Japan, dude. All right. We'll talk a about billion that yen in one day. Oh, yeah, that's right. With the a Jujutsu billion Kaisen zero yen. movie. <laughs> yeah, the zero movie, which is, is going insane. And. It's I you know I didn't realize in the original Juju how often they talk about the main character in Zero, which is pretty wild when you really think about it. You know? I know it's crazy. I wonder um, when we're getting it. Twenty twenty two, probably. I uh, hope. I hope. I mean, we're getting we're getting our well. Aria is gonna come. Uh, for Sora Online is gonna be summer, so I'd imagine that would be winter. Um, or fall. <laughs> fall. Isn't there another one that's supposed to debut fall? The movie. There was a movie that's supposed to debut fall in Japan. Oh, um, sure, the sure Shinkai movie, the Mikado Shinkai movie is the one that comes out in fall. Oh, okay. okay, fall there 2022. Um, and then there's another movie, aren't we? That we're, oh, that's coming out in a couple months. I gotta, I gotta see if I get the tickets. I forgot. Um, Sing in Harmony. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be next month when you come up. <laughs> yes, dude. Hopefully, we'll and be Bell this. and Bell two weeks before that. And Bell, that's the other one. Yes, when so is Bell we'll, coming out? Fuck, uh, I the 15th. Movie. Okay, cool. I gotta see if I can get tickets. Are they out? Yeah, I, yeah. I think oh, they're out by me. I didn't buy them yet. Ah, oh, fuck. Then that means if they're by you, then they definitely gotta be mine. Anyway, all right. Let's just not fucking keep everybody waiting, bro. All right, uh, guys. Without further ado, uh, we're gonna talk about almost all the finales aside from four, which will be next week because uh, they're all not done yet. Like uh, Comey can't communicate, Blue Period, Meta mm-hmm. Hero, and what was the other one? Oh, uh, Far Away Paladin. So we'll be talking about the penultimates of those. But uh, let's not waste any time. Let's just dive right into it. <laughs> We're diving. Uh, we'll go, I'll go first. Uh, I forgot about this last week. Uh, Night beyond the tricorder window. Good job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's an extra one for <laughs> this week. Uh, I forgot a good chunk of it. So I'll just keep this one brief. Basically, uh, the penultimate was basically about Mikado and his father, like the whole confrontation, because he actually like he find out who he is. He got he was able to figure out his name and that uh, the father or we actually don't know his name. So we just call him Sensei. So uh, Sensei was basically belittling Mikado the whole time. And this led to Mikado like standing up for himself to and tell him, hey, it's a slap in the face reality. You're the one that left. You fucking abandoned mom. You abandoned me because you're that fucking paranoid. You Fuck bastard. you. You bastard. And this led uh, Sensei to freak it out, and he lost his powers. <laughs> yeah, his like his powers were gone. Like the protection charm he gave to because a kid, like that, yeah, that's what worked on him, mm-hmm. and led to just him having the mental breakdown on the floor. And Mikado's mother actually started remembering her husband <laughs> mm. because of it, because uh, he like erased that memory from her from them when he when he left them, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, that was that. And 
before we get to the finale, uh, Mikado gets transported back to uh, gets to where Hiwakawa is, like to try to snap him out of it to to get him out of the house. Mm. And then for the finale of that, they had that conversation. I was like, you don't have to be scared anymore when you're with me type of thing. Like, like he starts doing all this, like saying like, like he's there for her. You're not alone anymore. You don't have to be like this guy that doesn't understand emotions or anything. Mm-hmm. Eventually, uh, he would come out steps out of it. And then uh, Mikado gets him out of there. And they all leave that. They all leave that abandoned house. Ervin's done. There's no, no more bad guys. They let the father there to just wallow in his miseries. And um, basically, that was more or less the gist of it. Uh, there was no uh, real romance or kissing from the two. Uh, uh, I was like, eh, no, but you know what? This is I'm fine with how it is. It's like mm-hmm. it's like, a, like 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 you know, like they're kind of a couple, but it's just more of he's just more. Of, he's I don't just, like you know. I just don't like implied shit, bro. Like you, you just got to go full with it. Like you, you don't do it or you go with it. Like I don't like that implied bullshit implied bullshit like just it aggravates me because it's just like you're you're like tiptoeing around it or you're pussyfooting around it like eh. no i get it. and i wish they did share a kiss something like that but uh so because of this he would come was kind of out of work because they already took care of the big supernatural curses but they actually eventually get them out to find him a place to live well there's a different case and then that's it mm. um this was average uh it picked definitely picked up near the end but the beginning stuff was the one that's made it like a little meh Mm-hmm. Oh, like three out of five. Okay, nothing, nothing great, but uh, that's just that's just how it is. Uh, visual it's prison, just the way it is. Yep. righty, visual prison. Things will never be the same. Shut up! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we finally have the fr- the freeway battle of the bands. They're all singing their songs. <laughs> Eventually, uh, first, uh, Oz gets that big morale boost. Uh, Gil is part of it for that one last concert. It's considered Oz's farewell tour. Mm-hmm. And Eclipse does their song. And then Lost Eden does their song. Uh, all the fans are cheering for all of them in the, at these three different venues. Mm-hmm. And then they're all in the visual prison of like the final little showdown. But Oz do- does their song and they win. Yeah. So because of this, they win. They get the Scarlet Tear. Oz no shorty. Yes, and you see Gil uh, more his body deteriorating, like this is it for him. And then uh, you see Lost Eden and Eclipse give up their remaining Scarlet Tears, which is about like nine each mm-hmm. to give to uh, to give to Angie to uh, like, hey, this you got about nineteen Scarlet Tears because one wouldn't be enough. Like, will this be enough? But then Gil's like, it, it's fine. Like, you really don't have to do this for me. Just let me die. <laughs> Let me die in peace. Fuck. Yeah, that, that type of thing. Like, I'm content. Like, I, I did I did what I needed to do. I helped you. And like I told you everything about your family and how I do them. Like, mm-hmm. it's fine. And uh, do you see, like, like, just use this on yourself to turn yourself back into human. But uh, then let the Angie cry like another tear, like a, a tear of blood into that cup with all the other Scarlet Tears. And then eventually. I always find that gangster, bro. When somebody cries a tear of blood, that's gangster. Yeah. Man. It's fucking cool. <laughs> And eventually led into, uh, I guess, Gil drank it, and he's not dead. <laughs> he drank her blood, her tear blood. Oh, yeah, like all, all the Scarlet Tears, yeah. Because basically with the Scarlet Tears, you get the power of whatever you want. <laughs> so she gave him AIDS. What? So she gave him AIDS. Yeah, he gave him AIDS, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's, no, there's, there's no girls in this, so. Mm. All guys. <laughs> but uh eventually but yeah like he's still alive you know he still has like the scars from when he was like deteriorating like they're still there but he's not died anymore Mm -hmm. and um you see oz is making a comeback wants to do a comeback tour uh eve and gil uh at their place they reopen up like their little cafe coffee shop ordeal Mm -hmm. and then it ends with like you see a guy look at an oz poster and Angie walks up to him like, hey, so your poster, like, tell me, do you like music? And that's where it ends. So a night, as it was just another average one. Uh, again, it's more of, I like the music than anything else in this. Truly this season, if I'm being honest, as, just as a heads up, as a general, I really feel it's just average. Like a lot yeah, of no, that's, a yeah, lot like, there, of there, like there's nothing I disliked, but there are some that yes. are either let down at the end or just okay. <laughs> Yes. So this was this was another three out of five or six out of ten, whatever you want to call it. Yes. So here we go with that one. Uh, Loop on the third part six. Uh, they gave us two episodes for this uh, half of the, for the first half of the finale. 
Ooh. It's all it's all about the Sherlock case with the investigating uh, the group called Raven. Mm. And so uh, they should have named crazy. it the flock. Stop it. We're not doing that type of flock. <laughs> uh, I, I wish so, but <laughs> <laughs> I see that was a good one, right? <laughs> it was a good one. Uh, anyway, um, basically, uh, Sherlock is trying to find out more about the, the case. And he's like, he knows Lupin's going to be nearby. And you see uh, Sherlock have a heart attack. He like collapses. And uh, Lily, Watson's daughter, and Lesterod. Uh, pick him up and they take him to the hospital. But Sherlock tells him to stop the car at this random street. And you find out why. And it was where Watson died, where Lily was in the car when, like, when seeing her dad die. So basically, he he did that. He faked the heart attack to get sent there with her to trigger her memories of what happened back then instead of just repressing them. Mm-hmm. So that happened. <laughs> uh, eventually, they go to uh, the hideout where, of Raven. Uh, Lupin's there, Zenigata's there, Sherlock and Lily are there. But it's like, oh, I brought Sher- I brought Zenigata in, in the agreement that he can't arrest you here, Lupin. I know you didn't kill my dad. Like she, like, she knows that now. Like, she figured that out. That's not you that killed him and all that. And they're trying to figure out uh, the clue, like, of the treasure in that room. And they find that that room is just covered in darkness. So basically, you need light to, like, open the secret door. Mm-hmm. So they open the curtains and all that. And it, the place blows up. Boom. <laughs> Boom. It was basically a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Yep. Uh, they Not all our got favorite out. kind either. Yes. Uh, they got out. Okay. I see. Um, yeah. I see, you see Lupin. Uh, <laughs> you see Lupin in disguise, like walking around. Like, Lou's like, you think Lupin's okay? Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's in the, he, I'm sure he's disguised as an old man somewhere. You just seem like, they walking past them. That was uh, the part one of that. Now we're going to go to the part two. Uh, Lupin uh, figured out uh, where to go for the Raven. And um, Albert, uh, the one that wants Lupin to get it and to bring it, like bring the treasure to him, basically, because it's uh, British secrets that people don't want. They don't want people to know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, eh, I ain't giving it to you. I'm, I'm doing it for myself because it's a lot of money and I could basically sell it to anyone. So mm-hmm. I'm keeping it for me. <laughs> Uh, eventually, uh, they get to the hideout where it was. Uh, you see Sherlock, Lily, and Lester are there. You see Lupin, Jigen, and Goemon there. And you see Fujiko, the bitch, again. Like, mm-hmm. oh, double cross. Even though it's not normal, she does it all the time when she wants to treasure for herself. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's there. She's there with Zenigata and the and the police. Like, sorry, I just want. I really don't want to share this treasure. So, <laughs> fuck you. Right. And then uh, you see one of the Raven guys there, and then a Lupin shoots him. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I shot him because he's the one that caused you all trouble. Mm. Like, he's the one that shot Watson, and he's part of the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns out he didn't do it. <laughs> and then uh, you see Sherlock and Lupin fighting. Like, like should we sell the score? Like, yeah, we'll sell the score. So you get a quick little fight scene, and Lupin shoots Sherlock mm-hmm. in, the ch- like in the stomach. And you see him falling down, and Lily runs over to Sherlock, trying to like, "Hey, like, are you okay?" And you see Lesterod there, and he's like yelling all that. And Lily looks at him, and Lesterod was the one that shot Watson back then. Mm. So this whole time, he was playing double agent with Scarlet Yard and the Raven. <laughs> and then, and then he's like, "Like, no, I didn't mean to." Like, and then Sherlock basically he didn't he really didn't get shot. He just faked it. It was of a blank. It yeah, it was, it was the the gun was a blank, so they're in on it just to get mm-hmm. him to confess. Mm-hmm. It's like I knew it was you. I just wanted you. like, like how'd you know? Because you talked about what Lily, the scarf she was wearing, all that. Yet you weren't there when it happened. <laughs> so how mm-hmm. would you know? Mm-hmm. Like shit, my cover's blown. Well, I'm gonna blow myself up. <laughs> yeah, and like I'm gonna take the treasure. You can't take it with me. Uh, it turns out the t- treasure is a fake. The it's real trick. The tr- the real treasure was basically they have all these defective bombs, and they they were threatening the country to use them. Mm-hmm. So basically, they had that fear of power over everyone in in, in London. That was it. Mm-hmm. So that was the real fear. Like, oh yeah, the, also the, the the group disbanded like twenty years ago. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. basically, it was all all the whole thing was a bluff. <laughs> so Lester Rod does starts to run away. Lupin and Sherlock run up the stairs, try to catch him, but Lester Rod blows up with the as he jumps up the bridge into the water. So that's that case closed for that. Bye bye. And then. Uh, and then we get to like near the end of it. Uh, Sherlock talks to Lupin. It's like, I am curious about one thing. Uh, why were like, why'd you care about Lily and all that? Like, like, what was the point of you even being here? Mm-hmm. 
And he said, well, because when, because, because he was there when Watson was dying and Watson told him to watch out for his daughter because mm-hmm. he fought, because Watson fought with Sherlock in the, in the smoke. So you thought it was a Sherlock, but it was me. Deal. Yeah. Basically. So basically mm-hmm. he, and so he basically told Sherlock that it's like, yeah, like I was just honoring a man's wish, but the whole time, like he meant it for you. Mm-hmm. So that's why he did that. And Sherlock's like, well, uh, you got me there. Uh, let's meet again. And Lubo's like, fuck no, I ain't coming back to London yeah. after all this. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope I never see you again. Fuck this. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, he sees Eddie Gala. Lily, Lily, what's his Eddie Gala? Like, so I had to go catch him now. And then he sees Eddie Gala just laughing. <laughs> oh, 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 like, oh. like yeah, yeah, I'll catch him. I'll, don't worry, I'll catch him. And there's an after credit. But wait, it's, there's more. Uh, basically, uh, Sherlock is talking to the people with Lily. And then you see this young teenage guy. Who went up to him and like shake Sherlock to shake Sherlock's hand and he says, I'm James Moriarty. Nice to meet you. Wow. <laughs> so uh so all that like, basically, yeah, he's like a, he's like a, he's a young kid in this one kid in this one. And then uh he went to Lupin saying, Well, uh I'm gonna go. And then Lupin told Moriarty, like, yeah, watch out for Sherlock. Uh he's a real handful. That's pretty cool. And uh G- and then Jigan's like, Do you know him? I uh, can say he's an acquaintance, but he's someone I don't want to mess with. And then ends there. That's part one. Uh, basically, again, I love all the stuff involved in the Sherlock. The side stories are either good or okay. So I definitely enjoyed this. Uh, I give it a seven and a half. Out <laughs> seven. Out. You hold on. No, so you can't give something a three out of five and then give something else a seven and a half out of ten. Five. Three and a half out of ten. Three and a half out of ten. Three and a half out of five. Okay, I'm gonna say like, wow, that's fucking right. dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> three and a half out of five. All right, two more, two more, two more. Uh, Blue period next. Uh, we picked up where we left off. Yaguchi was uh, basically still like collapsed on the floor. And then you see a student walking up to him. I asked if he's okay and all that. It needs help. Uh, Yaguchi thought it was uh, Mori. That was a uh, check out button, but it was actually uh, uh, Takahashi, who was basically giving him a hard time during the first half of the, of the season. Mm. Like He's actually concerned for him. And then uh, Maki came up and like they actually helped him up to get to the top floor. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if, if, if you're, like, if, they've said it, if you really can't continue, go to the go to the nurse's office and they'll check up on you. And he's like, nope, I'm doing this. I got to pass this exam. Test two is, was in fact a naked portrait. You Ooh. have to draw, a, yeah, you had to draw a naked model. And uh, while everyone's drawn, Yagachi passed out, like he was falling asleep. And passed then, out like he like passed out like or did he like, fall asleep? Like, like like he was like falling asleep like he was sleeping like setting up. Oh okay. Yeah, like he closed his eyes and then all of a sudden it was already three hours past his lunch break. And he's butt naked. He's not naked. Oh okay. I the, you model, the model, the model, the model is naked. It's, it's not. It's not a self portrait. It's like you're drawing a naked person. And the naked person just stood there and watched him sleep. Well, no, because there's like there's, there's a bunch of other students there too. So so she had to stay still no matter what. Yeah. So yeah, but because of this, he missed the half first half of that first day of the exam. So he's kind of freaking out. Like, damn it, like he's behind now. But he felt a little better from again from taking that little three hour nap. <laughs> right. But again, he was still having the fever, the hives, he was still like weak. So uh he basically skipped through his lunch break to try to draw as much as he could. Uh day one's over. Um uh, he's he's still behind, uh, what you call it, and then uh oba sensei called him like check up on him because he said he was gonna be he wasn't gonna come back to class for the rest of the day because he wasn't feeling well and then uh, like then yaguchi was like yeah well i'm not doing great i, I felt behind and all that because like, yeah, that, that's always your strength like you always like you know how to rise to the occasion that she actually gave him advice on how to basically take care of himself like basically have a cold rag covering his head type of thing mm. wear glasses to like this so your eyes don't hurt as much and basically, all this advice, like, keep himself, like, steady, in a steady, stable condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, these whole three days is just drawing that, is just drawing that body. Basically, you got, like, what you theme for it is, and then your, basically, you know, your other, there are your other materials for day two, and day three is basically your finishing touches. <laughs> so, and then Yaguchi basically says, like, I, this should be okay for me, because he did a self-naked portrait a couple of day, a day before the exam. Yeah. Like when he drew himself naked, I remembered. Yeah, like I wonder if he drew himself with a big dick. No, I, I, no, I'm pretty sure. He, I got. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he draw himself normally. Basically, if you could learn to accept yourself, flaws and not and no flaws, then you do a good job with the 
they you actually accept your, accept yourself that basically so i don't think he's gonna so he draw himself with a big dick girl sees it like oh or guys it. It. oh <laughs> this isn't to scale <laughs> and like yeah like you're a self-conscious piece of shit so why should i believe you and your art <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> uh, that's a good yeah. and then he eventually gets an idea while we're still on day two and you see him like grab some liquid material and pour it on his sketchbook and the teacher who was was like watching the big exams like what the fuck is, are you doing and then that's where the episode ended so i'm pretty sure the finale is just the last day exam we'll find out if he passes or not yes. uh, yep great shit <laughs> i'm very happy with it all right one more to go i'm sure this time i am sure this time you sure we're not gonna end this bitch after four hours? Hey, dude, I forgot about fucking. No, no, it's it's done. It is done. Yeah. <laughs> so fuck you. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, ranking of kings. Uh, I love this finale. <laughs> well, no, end of core one essentially. Uh, basically, you see Dida like stuck in the mirror. That's how it starts off with, and he sees a little girl there, and you find out it's uh. Mary uh, Mary Jano, who was basically the lady in the mirror, like the evil spirit, but her as a kid. So, but he didn't know that, but he was still checking up on her. And you, and then you see visions of like villagers of how they tortured this girl. Like they peeled the skin off her face, they cut off her hands. Mm. They talk about how, like how she's a killer and all that. What and the then fuck? and then Dida was basically telling him like, "Fuck you guys! I'm I got protected. Leave her alone." And then he try and he want like he's like, "Hey, like." What's your name? Well, help like help, help me get help me get out of here. We can get out of here together. But um Miranjo Mir- just left, just left it like fuck this. <laughs> that be like disappeared into the disappeared into the background. So uh that that part happened. That was that was basically the first half of it. And then the second half of it, we go back to uh Boji, Kage, and Despa. Uh Boji's train is done, done. He's about to like, he's like he's about to leave again. Despa like he's proud of him. He actually gives him like words of encouragement. And he's like, like you could overcome all this. I just love everything about yourself. Like, so like, fuck what people say. And let the boji cry because he hasn't like hurt. Because yeah, no one's really told him that type of thing. And it's good that he has someone else on his side that's not just Kage. And then basically, it's like, oh shit. Um, and that boji decides to go home because his family's in trouble. His mom's in trouble. Who's basically getting ready to go to war with King Bose, her the dad, the yeah, the dad and her husband. And all, while all this is going on, the actual king of the underworld is actually getting ready to help. Like, like he's getting ready to go to battle too with the lady in the mirror, because uh, basically, up, uh, uh, basically, uh, a prisoner was gone and they took him. Basically, like, well, uh, you're gonna go find this fucker and you're gonna arrest him, bring him back, or kill him. <laughs> so we're so we're getting ready for war in the second core, mm-hmm. and I can't wait. <laughs> so great stuff. First half, five out of five for sure. Mm. So I, I love this series. Uh, all right, that is it for me. Your turn. Oh, my bad. I was reading something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Are you a motherfucker? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't. Um, all right, we'll start with one of the ones that finished for me, and that was Scarlet Nexus. Um, basically, we left off with everyone forgetting about Karen. And so this episode happens and the world is happier and better. Um, the sky is clearer and everybody's still forgotten about Karen. Um, and slowly but surely now everybody is basically forgetting about Karen with the exception of Kasani and Yuito. Um, we we learn basically it's like an after show. Basically, we learn about everything that happened after the events of, uh, of the, the penultimate episode. And so. Um, we see Yuito um, had uh, another episode with his brain because his brain was too um, inconsistent uh, because of everything that went on throughout the season. And he's temporarily in a wheelchair. It's pretty wild. Um, and he's going to lose the majority, if not all of his psionic powers. So that sucks. Um, and then we see Kasane, uh, Kagero, and um, the other chick from Togetsu. I forget her name now. Um, but they're going to be basically a part of the moon exploratory program. So they're going to basically send them to the moon to find out what's happened in 200 years since uh, everything was established and to find out what's going on, if there's still others on the moon or what's going on, if there's anybody left on the moon, et cetera. Uh, so they'll be part of that. Um, uh, Alice, who now is revived, thanks to Karen sacrificing himself. Um, Alice is now a commander along with um 
ah, what the fuck is this guy's name? Uh, Shinden. Um, so he um, will be part of that as well. And uh, I'm sorry, their commanders rather. And then basically the episode just kind of follows like on the aftermaths of everything that goes on um, and, and so forth and so on. Yeah, Yuito's uh, brother gets uh, pinned for the everything that happened and is thrown out. Um, and basically the Sumeragi clan and then the other clan as well that was running the hospitals, those two clans are ba- that were once prominent clans are basically being scapegoated and they're under extreme scrutiny right now um, amongst all the people because basically they're pretty much behind what has happened. So it's going to take time to rehabilitate, but, you know, they're going to be working towards rehabilitating their images and stuff of that nature. And so the episode basically ends with uh, Yui Tone Kasane. Um, they go around, see everybody, talk, etc. And then they go to where the Kunad Gate was and they go to like a makeshift memorial that's there. And they have like a long conversation about, you know, life and regrets and stuff, etc. like that. And then basically they Yui Tone says like, hey, I'm going to get into politics. Um, so that way I can restore like, you know, the good name of the Sumeragi like name. And I want to do more. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention Karen's brother now is the chief of the OSF. Um, it's funny. It's a little like dinky, like 14 year old kid is the chief. It's kind of funny. Again, he's not really 14. He like looks like he's 14, but he's like 20 something. But in any case, it's a dinky little fucking kid. He's the fucking chief. But anyway, so he's the chief. And he said, Yuito is basically going to work with him to make the world a better place for, for duds because duds are like, you know, hardly considered human in this like day and age and they want to make their world better and they want to make the government better where the people will trust the government again and not worry about lies or being like you know potentially abducted or experimented on or worry that they're like you know looking at them etc so they basically reaffirm that and then there's still others that exist um there's another attack and uh kasane runs over there um and then we basically just you know see the end of the series um it wasn't bad i gave it a three out of five i'd say so um like i said the beginning is kind of slow the middle is and eh. toward the end of the middle starts to pick up and toward like the last like the last quarter of the show it's like really really good this, in terms of storyline animations hit or miss um or sometimes it's really great sometimes it's meh so story music i'm sorry music is whatever you know doesn't you know do anything or isn't bad or anything like that but it's not like oh my god amazing so um i give it a low end three out of five uh, moving on, we'll go to the penultimate episode of Banished Hero, which is one of my surprises of the season. So basically, um, with Banished Hero, we see an all-out battle between um, uh, Rit, uh, Rit, Rudy, uh, Red, and um, everybody else against uh, uh, Ariz and um, the the demon Shin Shindanan. I think it's Shindanan or something like that. Anyway against the demon god basically and we see this battle that commences between everybody um we see danan who's there and he first faces uh sheen danan and he actually gets like really close to finishing him then ariz turns on him and danan is is incapacitated um they restore upon rudy and them finding him they restore him they tell him the rest they go after him and we find out that the sword the sacred sword that rudy uses is te- is an imposter sword and that um that if she uses the this sword that's there like this relic sword which is like a replica or which is like the real sword that the first deem i'm sorry the first uh hero ever used that it'll enhance her blessing and so they take the swords they go after each other etc and um again the battle commences uh over the course of time they everybody gets kind of split up so Arez basically Arez faces rit and rudy i'm sorry rit and and red and um uh rudy and the demon king go off to face each other and uh basically at that time theodora um who's the last member of the um oh, i forgot about tisei too she's there too um but theodora is the last member of the um of the party she's with albert and so basically um at Ares almost defeats rudy and i'm sorry uh red and ritz Almost if he's red and rich, send, sends them down a like an elevator shaft. Um, as they're about to die, Danan, who's recovered, saves them and sends them back up the shaft over to um to Ares. Ares is like, why can't you die? Da, 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 da. And so um they basically overwhelm Ares and uh and kill him. Very good. Kill him lovely. Thank God. Anyway, Theodora comes in, Theodora turns on Rudy, binds Rit. I'm sorry, yeah, binds, yeah, binds Rit. 
um, turns on Rudy and says, listen, you know, like your job and the whole purpose of them is, 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 again, they want to bring the hero back to doing hero work while Rudy just wants to be a normal teenage girl. She's a 17 year old girl. She just wants to live her life. But everyone's forcing her to be the hero. The only difference, though, is that Theodora is doing it because uh, of her belief in God, not because of her selfish beliefs like Ares, who was killed. So eventually they take care of Theodora which I found out isn't the way they took care of Theodora isn't actually accurate in comparison to the manga. It's pretty wild or sorry, the light novel, um, which was interesting. But anyway, um, as this is happening, uh, Rudy and the demon King are facing each other and um, Rudy manages to disarm the King, but also she's disarmed. And so she picks up the demon King sword, the real sword that's supposed to enhance her blessing slices, the fucking Shindandan slices him to shit, just fucking just slices him completely to shit, kills him. And she jumps up the shaft and everybody thinks like, Oh, cool. All's well. It ends well. Everything is good. And at the same time, Tisei is there and Tisei, um is injured um, at the hands of, uh, of Ares, but she's still doing pretty well. Um, and Rudy's like, or I'm sorry, Red goes up to, to Rudy and was like, hey, you know, this is all good. And unexplicitly, unexplicably, without a, a like a single word said, Rudy attacks her brother, Red. And so um, what's it called? Tise jumps in and uh, manages to save Red, but she's gravely injured. And um, the episode ends with everybody in complete and absolute shock. Like, oh, my God, why did this happen? And Rudy is just, you know, fucking cold like she was before. So. Um, it's pretty good. The episode ends or the season ends tomorrow and I'm looking forward to it. I think there's more in the light novel, which I hope we get a second season. So that'll be good. Um, if I were to give it a review, honestly, Banisher was one of my surprises of the season. I would probably give it a, uh, a solid three out of five. It was very, very good. I'll get into it as we go along. Um, next for me is, um, Boruto episode two thirty of Boruto is pretty good. Basically, we left off with the client. Um, let's go. We left off with the client uh, losing the box and needing the um, the stuff. So the to retrieve the the medicine back. And so um, basically, uh, what's his face? Uh, God damn it, um, Kawaki. Kawaki goes over with the client to go retrieve the medicine. Meanwhile, uh, Shikadai and Chocho are going back to the village. And so. Um, as they're doing that, we find out basically that uh, Konomaru record like pinpoints like the issue going on with the six boys, and we find out like oh like they're everybody's correlated like this is a, an attack in the land of calm seas, and uh, Naruto recognizes like oh shit that's where we sent Kawaki Shikadai and them so go ahead and send reinforcements. Team Seven should be around there. Go send them. And so Team Seven, when they're told of the mission, they're like oh shit Boruto is right because Boruto had thought like yo that the, the, those guys aren't right he noticed that uh when they were doing their mission but they couldn't do anything because they had their mission and so as they're going off to intercept uh intercept team 10 um they find shikadai and chocho you know and they figure out they get everything that's explained going on etc and so um mitsuki and sarada take chocho to, to the infirmary so she gets worked on and boruto and shikadai go off to intercept um uh, Kowaki and uh, the, and the client, and so with the client, um, they're after him. They manage to catch up, and they end up getting caught in like a mist jutsu that basically sucks out all the water from everything surrounding, like all the life surrounding them, including themselves. And so when they do that, they um, they have to battle in between. And also the jutsu not only does it suck out all the water there, but it also displays. Um, uh like what's it called images or not images like hallucinations basically more or less of of the the, the caster um but kawaki is able to to figure it out eventually he uses fireball jitsu to break through and he notices some red strands that are basically kind of acting like a barrier he finds the red strands is able to take down the caster with the with his like you know fucking like demon arm thing that he has that's like scientific ninja tool takes him down um and basically they're like oh all oh, that, that's end well throughout this incident though one of the things that they had to fight back on was like a like a giant spinning blade the guy threw like a giant spinning blade and was like controlling it with the with the um with the blood uh the blood threads and so as Kawaki gets closer to tie this dude up, he pulls the, the spinning blade toward Kawaki. Kawaki's going to get cut. And the, the boy who he's escorting 
uh, sacrifices himself so that he gets hit and not Kawaki. And then Kawaki knocks the dude unconscious and the boy basically dies in his arms. But before he dies in, in Kawaki's arms, he entrusts him with completing the mission, giving the box and the medicine over to the sensei. And so um, he does that. And at the same time that he's that the boy dies in his arms, uh, Naruto, I'm sorry, uh, Boruto and Shikadai uh, meet up with him. And the three of them, I should say, they defeat the, the guy finally. Um, they incapac- incapacitate him and then they go over to um, basically finish the mission. They end up having to like to defeat some more like little small job guys, basically defeat them. Uh, Kawaki hands over the stuff and that's that. But he's deeply disturbed by everything that's happened. Um, and he collapses due to exhaustion and, and, and just, you know, that weight of guilt. He wakes up and he's in the hospital again. Everything is all, all well that ends well, you know, but that's good there. He wakes up, everything's cool, but he's still disturbed. He's still feeling this guilt because he let this boy die. And so after he he's not cleared, but he's like, I'm fine. And he walks out the hospital and waiting there is Shikadai. And Shikadai is like, come follow me. And so um, they end up walking to Konoha's cemetery and they stop in front of Shikaku's grave. And um, basically Shikadai is like, yeah, you know, you don't have to do this alone. You know, you may not think, think of us as teammates, but as Shinobi, we share each other's pain, including our successes and joys. We share each other's pain and sadness and agony. And so don't think that you're alone and feeling sad over everything that happened. I'm the team captain and it's my responsibility. And just as much as you failed, I failed too. So don't think you're alone. And, you know, that's it. He goes on his way. And so the end of the episode, basically, Kawaki goes over to uh, Naruto and asks Naruto, like, hey, let me take my final test again. Like, I don't want it to end the way it ended. Like, you know, like, I, I want to be a shinobi. And Naruto's like, don't worry about it. You're not taking another test because you passed. Shikadai said, because you care about other people the way you do, um, you're fit to do uh, missions. And so basically, the episode ends with Naruto saying, like, you're going to do missions with me from now on and again in level. And that's that. So I thought that was pretty cool for that story. I should... <clears throat> and then finally for me, uh, 86. <sighs> what could also, have been... Also, we should mention... Uh, per... yeah, oh, gonna... you are? Okay. I was going to. Okay. I, I was leading into that, but with that okay, long-ass all right, sigh. All right, that, all right, go ahead. <laughs> I was leading in with that long-ass sigh that this fucking anime should have been in my top three. Should have been in my top three of the season. I'm still going to rate it. But it can't be top three because it's not fucking complete. You want to know why it's not complete, guys? Because of the fucking shitty ass fucking delays in production that's hampered this fucking show throughout this entire season. Before the episode was uh, released on the previous Saturday, that Friday, it was announced that due to production issues and wanting to make sure that the last two episodes are up to the quality that 86 has produced, they will be postponing the last two episodes of the season of the show of that season, I should say, until March 2022. So we're not going to get this until the end of the winter or the beginning of spring, whichever one. Either way, we're not going to get these last two episodes until then. So it's kind of a kick in the dick. And I'm really pissed off that that's what the fuck happened. But you know what? I was thinking about it and I'm glad it's not a wonder egg scenario where like they just rush the shit. I'm glad it's not a pro. Uh, what's it called? A promise. Neverland uh, where they I, fucking well, obliterated the fucking show because I mean, they rushed I mean, it. I mean, if this wasn't going to be the case, I probably would say this to make it a winter 22. Well, I don't know what ha- everything was on schedule. And then like the elections preempted one episode and then production issues hampered two other episodes. And so with the production issues, that's where it becomes like, huh? And, you know, as far as I can tell, there's no real drop off in terms of production over these last few series, like few episodes. Everything has been pretty solid. And so I'm appreciative of the fact that they want to fuck my one of my favorite series in the ass. I'm very appreciative of that. But at the same time, you know, it's a little disappointing because, like I said, it should have ended. And the way it's ending is just so goddamn strong. So um, let me jump into the episode. So basically, in the previous episode, as I alluded to, um, uh, Shin and Raiden have a conversation, um, like that little argument. And basically, at the, the whole gist of that argument was that Raiden didn't want Shin to do it alone. He didn't want his battle to be alone. They all shared in, in equally in everything that they've been through, and they all want to experience the same thing. Either we all die together or we all live together. This is the outcome. There is no other outcome as far as they're concerned. And so basically 48 hours into their mission, um, they, they uh, again are in pursuit of everything of, uh, of the Morpho. And as they're in uh, pursuit, slowly but surely, each of them get cut off. Um, they're traversing a cliff. 
and um anya uh gets cut off um because they take out her they take out like a leg i think um the the legion take out a leg of her of her her juggernaut and she's like well i can't go any further but i could take these guys out so all good keep on going and then i'm sorry it's andrew not anja andrew andrew gets taken out and then um one of the other 86 gets taken out where it's like well you know the, the rest of the field is open field and we're gonna have more legion coming i'm gonna protect your back i'll stay a sniper and then another 86 gets taken out and then another 86 gets taken out this time by the morpho and so basically slowly but surely all of the 86 are taken out and so the only person left to battle uh kiri um in the morpho is um is is shin and frederica basically is there with fido frederica is forced to take shelter in fido and um she's quote unquote locked in to fido um during the battle with her, with uh, him and shin and the battle is pretty fucking good very back and forth battle um basically uh kiri won't allow shin to get close and we find out over time the reason why he doesn't do that is because kiri in his lifetime was also a close range expert when he was battling so he basically understands all of shin's patterns and similarities because he was similar back when he was alive and so over the course of the battle um the morpho and kiri managed to um to take out different pieces or exhaust um the the machine that shin is using and so at the end of the the end like toward the end of the battle um shin is almost is exhausted like his machine is exhausted and he's got one round left and again he can't he can't get in close to shoot his like close-up shot he doesn't have that ability and so um anyway um yeah so where was i at what when is this i can have matt cut this out uh you're talking about a battle all right i'll have him go back to 86 all right so as they're getting close um again can't reach them can't reach them can't reach them and all of a sudden out of the sky are fucking um what's it called um ah what are those mortars fucking random mortars start dropping from the sky those mortars are eerily similar to the mortars that Lena would fucking shoot for the for the 86 and uh as the mortars are dropping you hear like a distorted voice like <laughs> right so you can't tell it's not audible but it's a distorted voice coming in through shin's um through shin's uh what's it called thing actually i skipped the part before the mortars come in um Raiden manages to catch up and his uh, machine is again incapacitated he's bleeding all over the place because he got hit by a morpho shot um but survived and he tries to distract um distract the morpho for shin to get in close and he gets blown to shit so as far as we're aware of as it stands Raiden's dead because Raiden got blown to shit by the morpho and so again uh what's it called shin's got one shot and then all of a sudden all these different fucking mortars come in and we see different mortars we see explosive mortars we see mortars that uh fucking shoot napalm so napalm mortars like we see all these different mortars trying to help shin trying to take out the fucking morpho and he tries to get close try to get close he still can't get in close and then finally frederica manages to get out of fido and frederica still has shin's strap and so she pulls the strap out, fires a shot in the air to get the Morpho's attention. And Kiri realizes it's the fucking princess. And the princess is like, Kiri, it's me, your princess, my favorite knight. And they like have this conversation. And Kiri is like in shock because he's so happy to see her, his princess. But he's pissed off that, the, that she's with Shin. He thinks that Shin has the princess as like a hostage. And it only angers him more. And basically um as he's about to finish shin off uh frederica the princess frederica puts her gun puts the gun to her head and was like you don't want to do this i'm gonna kill myself and uh what's it called kiri's like no don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it and this in this moment of don't do it i'm gonna kill myself shin manages to break through and manages to get close um he asked frederica where is your knight where's your knight at and frederica tells him like he's behind the main gun at the top behind the main gun and so he manages to climb up and he shoots his fucking gun and boom blows up fucking kiri as he blows up kiri we see basically like flashes and we don't know what these are yet but we see flashes of kiri's life um in like the day i guess or days before he was killed uh by the the federacy um which is pretty wild and but when he kills Kiri, 
and this basically triggers a um a self-destroy mechanism and there's 10 seconds and everybody including Federica's like we finally did it we finally did it boom giant humongous explosion fucking massive explosion and that's how the episode ends with a massive catastrophic explosion near where shin was at the time of the explosion so some high tension high tension indeed with 86 and now we have to wait three months for the son of a bitch yep yes you do (laughs) bro so good and just so such a kick in the balls man fuck was that your last one i believe so i only had a few yeah we finished aquatope together um, i re- I rearranged some of the stuff on, on the list as you were talking earlier so um ben share boruto 86 scarlet yeah i'm done buddy we can start getting into the ones we have together all right uh we're, let's get started let's start with kobe you know what no we should uh yeah okay, never mind no you're right yeah yeah i was gonna say let's start with the ones that are still going and then we'll go into the finals yeah all right yeah said, yeah yeah king kobe is the one that is going so my bad go ahead yeah sorry all right all right uh basically uh this one was more focused on what events thankfully uh about the uh school games mm-hmm. uh basically what was that what was that one student from the third year I don't fucking know. Yeah, one of the students from the third year went up to Kobe. He's like, hey, uh, you're this type of degree is hot. In a literal sense, not, hey, you're hot, like you're cute. Yeah. And uh, this led to one of them going, hey, don't trust Kobe, you motherfucker. I will cut, I will castrate your clit right, right where you stand. <laughs> Straight don't, down. don't you fucking dare. All right, Can we got to, we got to kill fe- them. Is that even feasible? Can you? I mean, I'm yeah, sure yeah. You I, I, after Hadmaze tell, yeah, there, there's someone got rid of their clit and they cannot feel stimulated. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, fuck. That's yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah, the Remen's, uh, so that now Redden was rallying the troops saying, all right, we got to kill these people, kill the third years, we're going to win. How dare they talk to Kobe like this or try to touch her like that? Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, we got most of the games. Most of it was like, what, races? Like with the baton jumping over shit. Yeah. Uh, that we got people doing cheers. Even Comey got involved with one of the cheers. Yeah, yeah this is while uh, uh, Tadana was basically uh, falling down and collapsing. Like, I can't do this. I'm not fit. Yeah. He he, he sees Comey like, with those little cheers. And he just springs into action to be in third place. Hey, that's and, Bison. And, no, no, and yeah, and the fur and the third year girl's like, wow, you jumped us like hundred something degrees. Not bad. I I I underestimated you. So fuck you. Right. And then uh, we see Kobe's mom there, like trying to cheer him on during the break. And let's Kobe say, no, like get out of here. Stop embarrassing me, mom. Pushes her out, like, go away. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad I came because you have friends. So I'm happy. And then we get to the last race. Of uh, that, le- that came down to Kobe in the third year, and the third year girl won, and she got respect from Kobe. <laughs> yeah, because Kobe fell on her face, and she fucking came back and managed to get second. Yep. Uh, so because of that, and they came in second place in the overall. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the first, the first, the last, uh, what's it called? The last uh, part of the uh, of the, the the tournament was for one gazillion points. Yeah, one gazillion exactly. Exactly. Not not a, a zillion more, a zillion less. A gazillion more. Yep. And then basically it just led into that. They had their, their first place. Class one dash one are his second place. And who cares about the rest? They're losers. For real. If you're not first or last. Yep. Yeah. Uh they all celebrate and that was that was basically the gist of it, right? Was there a little size fan after or no? The what? Sorry, there was there was one more side story after yeah, the, uh, they went to the mall. They went again. Yeah, they went shopping. Arcade. No, sorry, arcade. No, there was two. They had the arcade, and then yeah. they had um the um the what's it called the the sun seed the the seed the seed on the face. That that was that was last week. Was that last week's seed on the face? Oh yeah, it yeah. was seed on the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah it was arcade. It was arcade. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was just the arcade. They all went to the arcade. Comey sees the crane machine. Talks yeah. about the thing she wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, basically, they all played games. They're about to leave. Uh, Todd Dino sees her, like, hey, you want that? And she just walked away. <laughs> and then you find well, out. He didn't uh, ask. He just kind of did it. You didn't ask her, though. No, because like, no, it's like, you see stuff and you want there. And then she just didn't really answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we go to the next day. You find out he went back to the arcade to win it. He won it. Mm-hmm. And then Kobe's like, oh, I already got one. <laughs> 
and then she's like, like okay well i won't you know and she's like yeah. let's trade and like, then she's trade. like you're like very like trade trade they haven't trade <laughs> i want it <laughs> yeah you want it for me uh we got that uh i thought that was a cute moment and then the after credit was even better which one was the after credit again where basically she's she lays down in bed she gets home from school she lays down in oh, bed all right yes and, and her mother yeah and her mother like says like call me dinner's ready go on in. and then like as you see call me call me is just like and just giddy rolling back and she forth. is rolling back and forth <laughs> blushing and giddy with excitement that she got something from tarano and her mother realizes like, like what's I'm going gonna on let you go. and she's like i'm gonna let you do your thing uh oh again, you, but- you didn't mention the fact that her mom showed up i did i said she showed up at the games yeah i didn't hear you yeah, then Kobe's like, get out, you're embarrassing me. Then she's talking about like, how she's glad she actually has friends type of thing. Damn. Uh, also, uh, we will review the finale next week, but we also find out there's going to be a season two in spring. So stay tuned for that when it is comes it spring? out in April. Yeah, for April. Nice. Wait, yeah. is it? Yeah. Isn't Kaguya-sama in the same one too? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we're going to have fun. <laughs> Oh boy, yes, we are. All righty, let's move on. Uh, we can't because we really can't grade it. We're moving on. Yeah, uh, we can grade, we can grade because we only have two episodes left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do it. I, 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 all right, four out, of, four out of five. You gave it a four, yeah, I gave it a four. I gave it a three because you know, I'm not getting what I wanted. I know completely well that they're doing a slow burn approach with Tarano and and Comey. Like, I get that, I respect that. And there are parts of the show that are funny, but I don't laugh nearly as much as I was expecting to laugh. And if I'm being honest as well, I really get the feeling. The reason why I mentioned Kaguya-sama, I was like, we get Kaguya-sama in the same season. Because when you're going to look at the two, you'll see the differences, but you're going to see how much more better Kaguya-sama is compared to Komi. Like, it, to me, it's a night and day thing. Not to say Komi's trash, but Komi is nowhere near Kaguya-sama, in my opinion. So I gave it a three. Three out of five. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's move on. Uh, far, <laughs> far, far away, Paladin. So far away, like, Paladin. Yep, because that's another continuation one. Um, I was kind of disappointed in the beginning because I thought we would see more of the liberated villages. Yeah, but I mean that, that wasn't the main story. I get what you said. I, I, I know, but I, I was, I was, I was, I want to see like some of them instead of just oh, we did all these already. Fuck you. <laughs> basically kind of aware. yeah you find out why the guy's called the penetrator or whatever mm-hmm. but basically the a good chunk of it was just an update on what they have been doing like uh people have been moving back into where the beasts were basically slain mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's not it's not like right it's not like thriving like there's a lot more people there's more money there's more revenue mm-hmm. you get uh merchants and then william reminisces about how uh, Gus basically talked about how money is important, that how they can be solved without magic, and he kind of like, yeah, he's right, basically. Yep, yep. So that that was a good chunk of it, and then we went to where Williams in the tent, and one of the guards was like, uh, these people who were supposed to investigate down this way, they haven't come back yet after the tent. It was uh, it wasn't one of the guards. It was Ray. I forget his name. Ray something. Ray Vok or something. Yeah, I I, I really don't know his name. I was, I was calling like, one of the guys. <laughs> Ray, I, I you know I kept wanting to call him Rayshevik. And I was like, no, that's the fucking capital of Iceland. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Ray Stock, Ray Stork, Ray Stock, Ray Vok, something like that. Well, well, not the penetrator, the other guy. No, it was the penetrator. Uh, no, he yeah, he told William. Yeah, he told William. By the way, hey. we keep glossing over the fact that's a really dope nickname. The penetrator. Yeah. yeah, that's such a good, <laughs> such a great fucking nickname, bro. You're not yeah, slaying... even, even, even though it's, it's just his weapon piercing. I know it's just it's, it's him slaying beasts with swords, but bro, if you're not fucking slaying hoes at the same time, what are you even doing? He doesn't want any glory on him, so Man, he doesn't want something else on him. Is what it sounds like. Yeah, that too. I'm sure he's he's busy making money. <laughs> he doesn't want the smell of fish on him. I get it. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, all right, let's stop it. <laughs> hey. Uh, basically, he tells William that uh, the people that were supposed to investigate one part of the forest has been ten days. It's been three days after that. And yeah. Come back. Yeah. So William. Menlador and a few people like, hey, you guys know the forest? All right, let's go. We're on a search team. Uh, that happens. Um, they see dead bodies there. And it was the group. Those are the homies. Those were the homies. And then they die. they're they dead. They don't know by what. And one is uh, missing a head. Yeah, one's missing a head. There's a giant footprint. They get buried. 
And one of the, one of the guys was like, ah, oh, they went they went down swinging like a boss. Fuck this. Let's pour the wine on the homies. Then they poured the wine on the homies. Like this shots for you, bro. But um, what's it called? He basically when he was when uh when Will was giving the prayer, he was saying like, or when was it the penetrator? I think they said that he's like, oh, one of them is missing a head. Yeah. And so they as they look down the stream, they're like, why would he run and throw his weapons? So they follow the weapons and we see the head at the base of, of a fork in the in the stream. And Will suddenly like realizes it's an ambush. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a and trap. Then- and, and of see, course, oh. you see a bunch of demons on top of the cliff, of them. Uh, like surrounding all the edges. Yes. And uh, they're once they're about like, all right, back up to the wall. And what's behind them? A fucking chimera. Because they thought it was a manticore, but no, it's a chimera. A uh, giant one. Three headed, three beast joint. So William and Mendelador basically do their casting of like protection from poison and stuff like that. Yep. And uh, Melador gets scratched by the Chimera, like slash in the gut. <laughs> yep. He's down and yeah. he's about to breathe. It was like he's about to breathe poison on him. Yep. And then uh, apparently I think one of the fairies were trying were protecting him, uh, but not as much while William's like, shit, I can't go. I can't help him. Yep. There's a uh, that he tries to catch cast lightning and one of the beasts tackles him from behind. So he's a- unable to cast a spell fully and it hits right onto him. <laughs> yep. So he falls down. They these guys are getting their asses whooped by these uh a bunch of demons. He's talking about how he's failing and all that. And out of nowhere, he pulls his demon weapon and slices one of them. <laughs> and he goes fucking berserk. Yep, he keeps doing that. Uh, he's ba- he's not making a dent on these guys either. <laughs> like, he's no, killing he is. Some. Like he's not, he's killing some of them. He's killing all of them. What do you mean? God, but I said there was still a number. Like they're still like they had. There was a fuck ton. He killed them all. He went fucking berserk. He kept getting, and it was crazy with with the sword. As everybody knows, or who has been listening to us knows, when you get sliced by the sword, um, when you slice that person with the sword back, it heals you. But as they said, you, you become get, you more lose dependent. Your sanity. Yeah, you lose your sanity. You become more dependent on the sword, and basically, it's wild because Will introspectively realizes that. Like, dude, like I'm losing my sanity. Like, I feel like I'm disgracing Will, Blood and Gus. I'm sorry, Gus, uh, Blood and uh, Mary. Mary. Yeah, she's like, he's like, I feel like I'm disgracing them. Um, But I just I can't like I'm, I'm killing in an unsightly manner. But like I this is what I have to do. And he's that, just, again, it, losing himself. He's just like screaming like, oh, like fucking barbaric fucking uh what's it called guttural screams of agony as he's murdering all of these fucking things and eventually he he kills them all he kills them all he kills them all and then fucking he snaps out of it i'm pretty sure the chimera is still alive no the chimera manages to escape he wanted to go after the chimera and he doesn't so he kills all the beasts except the chimera the penetrator comes over and was like yo like snap out of it, bro. Snap out of it. Like, yo, go heal Mendeldor before yeah, he fucking as, dies. As like, as and he like, goes to heal him, and he so he manages to save Mendel, but he, because he he's so out. drained and from the emotion and from the sword and from fighting, he passes out. Um, and so they have to basically retreat. They end up retreating to a village, and um, he wakes up first. Will wakes up first, and he's like, "Ow!" at first, but he's like, "Oh, what the fuck happened?" And he's like, "After you passed out, we retreated to the village. Mental's alive." He asks first thing, he's like, "Where's Mental?" Like, Mental's alive. He's you know wrapped up in bandages. (laughs) Yeah, basically, like he's unconscious right now. He's like in a little mini coma. And he's like, I got to go see him or save him. And he's like, no, you have to fucking rest. And so they make him rest. And And then the second half was just him monologuing. Yeah, the second half was him monologuing. He was basically introspectively realizing all like the stuff that he had. And he realizes. And he he talked about how he he was basically forcing himself to be like Mary, Blood and Gus. And how he became too dependent on Mendelador about how to have that type of relationship. He basically realizes like he he wants to gloss over the fact that he's OP. Like he doesn't want to put himself on such a pedestal that he's like ridiculously OP. But he realizes because he's so OP, he's expecting things people to be like and from others to be similar to him or to be like him. And that's just impossible. They can't. And so because of that, he feels extreme guilt because he put mental in a situation. He put everybody else in a situation to die just because he can handle it. He thought everybody else can. And that's not the case. So he feels extreme guilt. And Tony O and B, 
as he's walking, he basically gets up out of bed as he's going through these introspective ideas and depression. He walks, he's walking over to see Menelon to heal him. B and Tonio come over and they try to talk to him and he's just fucking emotional, but emotionless at the same time. Um, and they realize that something is up and he's just like, I, I'm going to leave you guys. And he leaves them and he goes over to Menel. He prays to Gracefield uh for mental and basically heals mental with great with the with the power as he does this though he talks to her like he talks to oh, her yeah, see- i got i got need your help i got it i figured it yeah out. he say he sees gracefield gracefield looks at him with a with a look of sadness and he's like gracefield like you know no need for you to be sad um i promise to do everything for you i promise to to fix everything i'm gonna fix it on my own so you don't have to worry about anything gracefield says nothing the image lifts up and he yeah but she also looked disappointed when she was disappointed. a little bit yeah like like this is, like, 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 like like that's not what i wanted you to say <laughs> yeah thing. like this isn't the route i want you to take but at the same time she's content to let him try and figure it yeah, out she, oh. yeah like like she knows like she needs people like he needs to be his own person yeah i think with menlador whatever he goes to find him at the finale they'll have that conversation but uh, eventually, the episode ends with uh, we'll, we'll leave it in the, the room, and then Melador wakes up and takes the uh, bandages off. Yeah, and he realizes, like, oh, shit, someone wet was here. Yeah, uh, you know, he, he knew Will was there. so He knew it was Will. Yeah, he had to know it was Will. Yeah, yeah he, knew, he knows about the wet dreams. Uh, but that is it with that. Uh, we got the finale. We'll talk about that next week. Mm-hmm. Should be crazy. Let's rate it. Uh, I give this a three, three, like, like three, three and a half. I wish I could give it a half, but I can't. But like, I really, I don't know, man. Like I, because I can't give it a half, it's closer to a four than it is a three. And right. I'm giving it a four. All right. It's That's a low fair. four. Like I would yeah. give, I could it, give it a, th- it, it, it definitely got better. If I could give it a 3.75 on analyst, I would give it a 3.75. Right, right. I don't want to give it a three because it's way better than a three. And it's not full yeah. level, but it just logistically it just makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. If I was going like out of 10, it'd be a seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But since it's a five, it's about like three, three and a half. <laughs> I get, you know, I just I find that I find that the the five star system makes more sense in my head right but in terms uh, of ratings no, the, the 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 decimal out of 10 just makes more sense but i just can't yeah. i don't want to go back to it i went to it and then i changed it to, to stars and now for me to go back it's be another- all right uncle dave <laughs> yeah you know all right uh i believe that that's it with the continuations for the next week's finale so let's get to the end of core one the platinum end <laughs> Yes. My fucking god, I hate I hate him. I hate Mirai. It's a consensus, I think, that everybody does not like Mirai. I like this show. This show is great. I know, but the fact that he's such a bad character, just dra- it he's just a pussy. It about, he's a just, fucking pussy. Just make it about Metropoli Man and Mukaido. I like those guys more than him. Yeah, I do. Yeah, like make kind of like how like, make, like as the main character, like how light Yagami was, like this villain type of thing. And but kind of like the one that stops and like has all these plans of has these strategies and just like this delay the cancer. You know, <laughs> just, you know, to jump ahead really quick. I really feel that once Mukaido dies, we're going to see a whole we're going to see a different Mirai and Sakura. I'm pretty sure it's going to be next episode, which, yeah, we're pretty sure it's going to be episode 13, which, by oh, the way, yeah, for there's, sure. there's a week. There's a week of a delay. Yeah, so. Ar- Ar- coming back in January. <laughs> yes, indeed. But yeah, just skip ahead. We're going to see a different Mirai, but the current Mirai. He's such a fucking putz. He's a putz. No, I, but just judging by what he wants, I think he just wants everyone to be immortal and happy once he becomes God. And that's just very unrealistic. Yeah. It's just, and yeah, yeah that, I, I don't see him winning. I don't see him dying, but I don't see him becoming God. You know what I, I could see? I could see both him and Metro Poly Man dying. And they're the final two. Or they may die and oh, Saki. I, I, as a thing, I think, Saki's left. I think Metropolitan Man is going to be next to die, like after Mukaido. He has to survive to the. He's going to survive. He's going. I think what's going to happen is Mirai is going to put him on the brink of death, and he, he's going to escape. He's going to probably be the one to put the final touches on Mukaido, and then he's going to escape while everyone worries about Mukaido dying. And yeah, I, I don't know. No, I think everyone should just die. Just end humanity. <laughs> you, you mean humanity would be fine? What do you mean? 
No, just just I think we just need to start over. Just uh, have God kill himself, and then all the humans go back. You know, unrelated to anything like anime related, I always say that's how the Big Bang happened. I always say like there was a world before us, and God was like, "These guys are fucking horrible. Fuck this!" Boom, the giant explosion, no more planet. And yeah, because yeah, the drawing it, board, yeah, and he's like, "Let's do this." Like- Add this, do this, yep. skip these, give them two balls, give her two tits. All right, let's try this again. Boom! Our Big Bang happens, and the universe exists, and then Adam and Eve fucked it up. Right. Uh, but let's let's talk briefly. All the about... religious people just like turned off our, our yeah. channel right now. Uh, all right, let's talk about briefly about what happened. Uh, um, uh, uh. Yeah, that's, we, we we got stuff to catch up on. But so, uh. so this will be kind of kind of quick. Basically, Mariah goes to the poison lady. And uh, DC Saki basically crying for it. But Hajime is like, why are you crying for this guy? What the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. Just, just run away with me. Just, just do it. Just come on. Just mm-hmm. Fuck these people. Why are you in love with them? They got shot with the arrow by him. Why? Yeah. I- I'll get to the arrows in a minute, too, because this actually plays a bit after after this, after this all this. <laughs> but um, basically, he's trying to figure out a way to not kill her while saving the poison, while not getting poisoned. Uh, Caesar tried to grab a shot, grabs it, and then uh, did she inject him with something like with the tentacles? She did not inject Mirai. She was trying to. She did not get to inject Mirai. Yeah, this led to Hajime comes in and gets hit with the poison. He slices at a three. He's so basically the poison lady shoots three tentacles, like three three uh, syringes. He slices two with his sword, but in order to save Saki, because Saki was there, he had to take the hit. He took the hit for Saki, which happened to take the hit for Mirai, and Hajime melts. I was just, so I, I Metropoli Man should have killed him. There should have been a fight between those two. Yes, there should have been. I, I think you could have done away with that type of thing. Yeah. And now Mukaido is getting weaker, and he starts. He basically falls down. Well, before that though, he Metropoli Man goes to the kids like, "All right, you're next." He's like, "Fuck this, I'm out of here." Type of thing. Yeah. And he kind of bails. So goodbye, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Rip. And now, and now, yeah, now Metropolitan is by himself. And oh, Mikado, no, you didn't, mention, you didn't mention that the fuck, the reason why he's by himself is because the only person left after they kill the fucking, after they managed to kill the, uh, the girl, yeah. um, the poison lady was the boy. And we're like, we I said, he like, he, like, he left. Yeah. And the boy was like, I don't want to die. I see how you shoot your comrades. Fuck that shit. Bye. And he fucking dips out, leaving Metropolitan alone. Yeah. I said that. Did you? Yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah, I said that, and uh, now Mukaido basically he's so weak right now he just collapses. Yeah, uh, like it's like he can't even lift up the he can't lift the big gun he can't do anything. Nope. So he's near the end of his rope, and uh, Metropolitan Man's like, "Hey, uh, but I, I'm gonna fucking kill you right now." Let's do this. Like basically, White Arrow versus Red Arrow. And Mirai has this monologue. Well, first before that, Mukaido's like, "Just kill him." Yeah, but basically, even though he's got shot with the red arrow, he's not listening still because basically you listen to the guy no matter what. Well, some people have more powerful, you know, minds. And you oh, know, well, apparently he does. Apparently it means fuck that. He had no problem doing it for Saki, but not Mikado. Hey, it is not a clear representation here. It's not, it's not, no, it's not. It's, it's not, not about equal that. representation. It's not about <laughs> that. You got shot with the arrow. You listen <laughs> Yeah. And he's just saying, fuck you. I'm not doing it. No one should die. Let's all be free and happy. Yeah. Fuck you, Mariah. <laughs> God, and even Metropolitan Man just fucking laughs at it. Like, you gotta be kidding me. That is the stupidest thing I heard. And now that's what basically they're gonna have the arrow show now. White Arrow versus Red. Indeed. Alrighty. Uh, three, three out of five. There's a lot of good stuff, but Mariah just drank. I, I like the other character. Yeah, but, I was but, what, but whatever. <laughs> what fuck it ever. <laughs> well, we'll see how season two uh, or not season two, core tour, core two finishes. Yeah, yeah we'll see because that's going to be the end of it. All righty, moving on. Move. Uh, Demon Slayer, Red Light District. Great episode. The, the, we got we got what we wanted. We got our we got a fight. But uh, before we get to that, uh, Tanjiro, sorry, not Tanjiro, Inusuke. Tengon, he tells Tanjiro oh. and uh, Inosuke like, you guys like I don't like he wants him to back out because that is who's gone. He got kidnapped because he he figured he because he while he was patrolling he didn't see him there. He's basically gone. Yeah, he got t- he got taken by Daki. He got got. He got got. So uh, Tenga Tenga just tells him, "All right, guys, you're leaving. You're done. There's there's no shame and there's no shame in quitting." Yep. And then uh, basically they said, "Fuck that." <laughs> yep. 
Uh, Tanjiro is like, all right, I'll meet you at your where you're staying later. And so Tanjiro goes to uh, the uh, head lady there, there or the high the high whore. Uh, basically, <laughs> the high whore, the high whore. <laughs> uh, basically, dresses up in his uniform, saying, "All right, I'm leaving. Um, I need to go." By the hey. way, I've been I've been a boy. I'm a guy. I've been I was a guy the whole time. And she's like, "Yeah, I know." I know. Like, how did you know? Like your voice. Yeah, <laughs> and he just has this blank stare of. She's like, I was busted this whole time. Like, and he's like, you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, but she's like, I, but I didn't question it. You were, you're a nice person. You have your reasons. I support you. I'm leaving tomorrow anyway because what you call it? I'm getting I'm get, married. I'm, yeah, I'm getting married. Someone so, wants me, the highest of whores, to be their husband, their wife. Yes, with well, enough money. And uh, so Tanjiro was like, all right, I'll see you later. Good, good luck. Congrats on getting married. And once he leaves the room, Doki's like. I heard you're leaving, uh, psych. <laughs> right? Like, I need to eat you before you leave. Yeah, exactly. So all that that happens. Uh, Tanjiro was on his way to Onosuke's, but he see, he, he smells the demon. and So, the, so he loses track of himself. He try, tries to find him. Onosuke's, like, impatient. Like, damn it, where the hell is he? He's like, he dished on me. Fine, I'm going to do it myself. He jumps on the roof, his head through the ceiling. It's like, hey, mice, get me my weapons. Muscle, like, muscle, he, muscle, yes, muscle, 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 yes, muscle, these muscle, muscular, muscle, muscle. These muscular Jojo mice <laughs> ha- have his weapons, his boar mask. Which, by the way, we could we could skip we could skip ahead two seconds to the um the the, the credit scene. Did you do you watch the after credit scene? I did, I did, I did. <laughs> yeah, the after credit scene explains that fucking these mice need are need to be. But what did he say? They need to be um and they need to have like no ego, but they need yeah. to be vain. So they can appreciate their muscles, so they can be the ultimate muscly mice. Exactly. The the muscle flamboyant muscle. mice. Muscle, 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 right. muscle, muscle. Right. While all that happens, uh basically more or less. Oh, I was saying, we're going back now. Uh so he so he leaves, he he leaves the house. Hey, fuck all you guys. This is me. Oh! Bye. Coming through. And uh, we go back to Tanjiro. Uh, the scent's getting closer. He knocks his door down. He sees Daki with the girl. Yep. And it's like, oh, uh, like you're no threat to me. How many of you are there? I already got one of you. So, yep. And then this led, in, and this led into a fight. Tanjiro got his ass whooped right away. He got fucking yeah. yeeted a- across the fucking building yes. into another building. And he's like, shit, I can't feel myself. Fuck, no, I got to get up. He gets up and the strap to the fucking box that's holding Netsuko breaks. He puts the box down like, hey, I can't fight while I have you on here because the strap is broken. Don't come out of there until I tell you to. Nezuko has a, a like worried look on her face. And basically, that's how the episode ends. Well, actually, no, 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 we, no, no, he, no, yeah, we he, see the actual battle. Yeah, we, we see, see the battle. battle for a bit. Uh, he holds off his own. He actually slices part of her kimono. Yeah, so we find out that the kimono basically she's able. Not only is she able to use the kimono as a weapon, but she's able to absorb humans into the kimono. And so we see the, as Matt said, an aerial battle between them, where Tanjiro holds his own. He's basically fighting the kimono and the and the demon up in midair. Like he recognizes upper six too, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Like it's an upper demon. So he holds his own against him and manages to slice the kimono. And when you slice the kimono blood comes out because the kimono is an extension of the demon so he slices the kimono and the piece where the woman is at and basically has saved the woman so now the episode ends with him about a you know go round two with yep. uh Daki with Daki Chan. ready ready fight but yeah great stuff can't wait for the next episode right, but uh, see, and I would imagine we're gonna see a newscape before we see Tengon I think when Tengon comes she's gonna do it yeah it depends on who gets that first I love how quick he is like god damn like he's <laughs> Who uh, uh Tengen, yeah. Tengen? Oh yeah. He's yeah, he's like, like he just sneaks behind the old guys like oh, supersonic. Uh, he's supersonic, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. He's well he's a sound to share, so yeah, oh that's true. I that is true. Oh yeah. man, I can't wait to see his fucking moves. Oh, oh yeah, they're 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 great. So Ooh, buddy. All right, so I'm excited. That shit uh, is litty. Uh, moving on. Next finale. Senpai is annoying. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. We're, we're that's why we're going to it now. <laughs> uh, Takeda basically starts to hit and get him uh, promoted because he's yeah. he's, he's asked a big clients. So it's like, oh, like God, how'd you do it? Like, I just doing my job. That's it. Like I've always done. <laughs> so like all the they, they want to celebrate. A uh, bunch of girls ask him out for a party. In the garage, he was he starts feeling jealous. Like fuck you. <laughs> that's my man. That's my twelve inch dick. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm sure he's bigger than that. 
He's a fucking bull. <laughs> yeah. Did I lose you? Oh, okay. I was like, did, did you die? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not dead. Like, you're like, like, look it up to Kata's legs. <laughs> oh. Gareth. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, Takeda's like, eh, I'm not doing the party. Fuck it. That's right. not my thing. And Igarashi encourages him to go. Like, they want to, they, they just want to congratulate you. You did a big thing. You, they look up to you. Just go. It's like, yeah. well, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, before that, though, too, uh, Takeda forgot something for them, like a presentation. And he can't do it right now because he's swamped with other work. So Igarashi volunteers to do it for him. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 are you sure? Like, because it's a big thing. Like, you can't ruin this. It's like, like, I, I learned from you. You're fine. Like, you'll be. This will be fine. <laughs> yep. He's like, all right. I trust you. Good luck. And then uh, we get a flashback of uh, her first day at work, and uh, Sakurai teases her, like, "Hey, can I call you Futaba Chan because she's tiny?" <laughs> yeah, that type of thing. Like, oh, she said Igarashi Chan first, and then Igarashi Chan. I don't know. And then she's like, "How about Futaba Chan?" Which is even worse. Like, yeah. <laughs> So uh, eventually she, she just yells at her. She goes away. He goes to get a drink. She sees uh, Takeda for the Bro, first time. When she was yelling at her the whole time, I was thinking, I was like, wow, what a fucking stuck up fucking prude this girl is. <laughs> That's literally what I was thinking while I was watching her. She's got, fucking she, she, she's got, well, like, she's got she's not fun at all. Damn. Well, igarashi has got a short fuse, so. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, now that this goes to Igarashi, goes to the vending machine, trying to get a drink. Takeda's behind her. He's like, damn, he's big. He's huge. Yeah. Uh, they start talking for a bit. And the Takeda's like, um, like, I don't know. We, we're, we're allowing students in here. And this pissed her off so much. Oh, she fucking was steaming. And then poor Kazuma. Kazuma's like, oi, Daijobu. And he's like, Daijo. Oh, and she's fucking like Medusa Chan. And he's like, all right, I, I guess you're He's like, I'll let, right. you go. I'll let you go. <laughs> and uh, he's saying, hey, Takeda talks. He's like, hey, uh, did you know did we have students here? Like, uh, no. <laughs> but uh, basically, yeah, the boss wants to talk to you about the new person you're training. <laughs> mm-hmm. did, did you see her? I was like, no. It's like, oh, well, uh, I don't know what to tell you. And then uh, the, the uh, Bucho, that's his name. He talks to uh, Igarashi first. And then Takeda, like, oh, yeah, you're going to be under his wing. And then she, like, glare, they glare at each other, like, does something happen? Like, yeah, I guess you could say that. I was like, give me someone else. Like, nope. <laughs> That's not how it works. We're going to get along just fine. Please. Uh, yeah, eventually, yeah, eventually, the Igarashi just gets, was just pissed off at him, but eventually she cooled off. She cooled down from mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, well, there's no escaping you. So, yeah. You're Yep. And then uh, we go back to current time. Uh, Igarashi called Takeda. like, oh, yeah, the, the thing went well. They said no, there was no issues at all. Takeda thanks her. He's going to the party and there's also Igarashi eating and drinking by herself. Mm-hmm. And she and she remembers like when basically like when are like like they're always together type of thing. So she's like not she's not liking that they're alone, that she's alone. Yep. And uh, one of the drunk guys from a, a drunk employee went, Hey little girl, what are you doing here? Let me touch the tata <laughs> in a public restaurant. <laughs> And he got she gets like gets super uncomfortable, about to cry, then Takeda. I don't know where it grabs him, like, hey, what the fuck you doing to my kohai? Mm-hmm. That there's my bitch. And then uh Igarashi gets happy. The, the co-workers come back for him, like, oh shit, I'm sorry. We left him alone for a minute. Don't be near it. Like, boy, what the fuck you doing, guy? Yep. Then Igarashi talks to Kata, he's like, I thought you were at the party. He's like, Yeah, I was. I said hello to everyone enough for like five minutes, then I left. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'd rather hang, I'd rather drink and hang out with you. And now, yeah, this is where they're at the same restaurant where at the first episode where she kind of confessed to him being drunk. Yeah, and they were all drinking. No more, no more, no more. Yeah, they drank a lot, according to the both of them. <laughs> Eventually, it led to Igarashi saying, "Like, there's gonna be a time where I don't need you anymore. You know that, right?" Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm aware, but until then, I'm gonna be here for you." And she's like, like you're drunk. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yes. And now we get to, I believe it was an after credit. Like it was raining. Igarashi was like outside, forgot her umbrella. So Kata comes, like, oh yeah, I got an umbrella. Come under the umbrella. Igarashi is all Sundari like with the whole being flustered. I'm close to him. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. So she starts backing away from the umbrella. And then he actually puts an arm around and pull her in. Like, like you're gonna get wet. It's okay. I don't mind. And then and it, the last words were Takeda Senpai, you really are annoying. <laughs> it was such a weekend. <laughs> it's a weekend, but I know we're getting more. 
Uh, are we? I feel, I feel like we're going to get more. Is there more? I'm sure there will be. Um, I can give it a three and a half. Three. Yeah, uh, okay. It's, it's, a, it's around there. Uh, I liked, I got I almost like Cosmo and Sakurai better a couple wise. Way better. But there was still some nice stuff, though, from Igarashi and Takeda's. And I liked the other characters. I liked Natsumi, Sakurai's brother, Oji Chan. Yeah, yeah, Mona. yeah. Mona. Mona, the little times we got her. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it was fun stuff. <laughs> it was as a whole, but <laughs> it, it could have been better. But for what we got, for, for what we got, though, I didn't mind. I expected way more, dude. Honestly, like especially lately with the type of fucking senpai kohai, um, a- uh, anime relationship type anime slice of life, slices slices of life that we've been getting. Like I expected a lot more. Honestly, right. that's fair. So all right, moving on. Moving on. Up. All right, uh, world's finest assassin. Let's Word. get to it. Uh, we picked up where we left off. Luke is there with uh, Tia, and I believe that was that's her father in the building. Okay, yeah. Uh, basically, they were talking about a plan of what to do. But the followers didn't know it also. And they said the plan was that uh, they're going to fake that Dia, fake her death, and they're going to burn the building down. Yes. So, so she could have her own identity type of thing. And then, okay, it's like, all right, fine. Uh, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to shout from the top of your lungs, I can't take it anymore. Go to that window. And when she was about to, as she's about to scare at the window, Lou senses something, and then you see this missile coming towards it, like, get down! Mm-hmm. And then explosion and fire. And like, holy shit, what the hell is that? And uh, it's someone that Luke thinks is the hero with the army behind him. And he has that legendary artifact that, uh, that he was searching for. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was like, shit, uh, what am I, like, shit, I gotta go, I gotta go meet him. But uh, before that, he preps up a bit. Like, he, has, like, he has a plan already. And uh, Luke goes down there, he talks to this hero, and they are agreeing to a duel. It's like, if I win, you guys basically back away. And then if anyone comes near uh, the family, like they're dead on the spot. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, you got my word on it. Even if, like, but like, I expect, uh, but I'm expecting to kill you. It's like, oh, well, I, I'm expecting to kill you too. So I'm going to tell this guy, hey, if anything happens, you fuck off. <laughs> yes, sir. I will. Yep. And it's like, oh, yeah, then I'm just going to take care of the hostage and whatever I want to her. <laughs> If I kill you, that's fine because it's not going to happen. And it's like, I respect you for making me bleed like this, but fuck you guys. (laughs) The first time I've ever tasted my blood, you're going to die. Nobody, nobody makes me taste my own. Nobody. (laughs) Nobody. Uh, Before that, though, we also had the goddess say she's going back to. uh, Goddamn it. But uh, we have a thing with goddess where, uh, like, as years years have passed, and now she goes to where Lug is from, like, that flashback. Yeah, uh, a little bit of the conversation there. But uh, basically, uh, Luke's like, "Oh yeah, uh, we're gonna start a bit." Well, basically, he saw he knows that the hero was in was in berserk mode. So mm. it's like, okay, shit, I had I had to wait a bit for him to cool down. That way, his stuff is like less like his stuff is, is cut in half again. You know what's crazy? I want to know that we, I mean, probably won't know, but I want to know how does he remember or how does he know? Like, is there like a thing that says like all people's like magical powers and shit? I, I think it's just from his potential or like he, he, like he could probably read their skills I don't or, he's know. Just, or he's just assuming. I don't know. Cause remember at the very beginning, he's like, yeah, you know, there are like 422, like a rank, like whatever, or whatever the fuck he said, or C the, like, rank, whatever. All, all, yeah. All these spells. Yeah. And he started going through like, co- like statistical combinations of shit. And I was like, Whoa. And yeah. like for now, like it kind of seems like he still understands that. So I'm very curious to know, like, how does he know or remember that? That's a good. I guess he has a good memory. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, anyway. and Luke was, and then Luke was like, I, "This battle is gonna end once this coin land." Though no, no, it's gonna start when the coin is like yeah. not long in the air. Did you, you mentioned like as he's talking to this guy, there's a countdown. He's like yeah. 440 seconds, 380 seconds, 180 yeah, like, well, seconds. Yeah, and he, basically he's timing. Seconds. He's timing the coin flip for when the berserk ability is is over. Or you, so we think. Yeah, that that, but was it, that that was his plan. Like he was like, he, that's why he talked to him for quite a while for that to go down. Not quite, and I'll explain why when you're done. When we get to the the point yeah. of what we're getting at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, soon as like the coin is down, like and you just see something coming from the sky, and explosion. <laughs> explosion. Yeah, like like Megumi style. Megumi explode. 
imagine a giant nuclear fucking bomb explosion grand no, like, on the grandest like a, of scales it's like a fucking like satellite beam essentially and here is where uh, you mentioned how he's timing the berserk i don't think he was timing the berserk he was timing the nuclear beam bomb so uh, did you mention how uh when they when uh what's his face uh satanta uh blew up the castle yeah um, remember there's a part where um where what's his face i was gonna say rudy god damn it um luke luke where luke he he like uh uses his power he comes up with like some like lead something and he goes and he shoots it up in the air and he shoots it up in the air and that timing that he sh- that he, the whatever that was he basically enacted it as a missile and that's right. what he was timing he was timing from the time that it, it, it made it the I, I think i think it was both time though. it was coming out it maybe yeah because he was because he was talking about his ability too because he says that while he's still in there you really couldn't touch him yeah 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 like yeah. like like maybe. like his stuff wouldn't work as much so i think he's trying both like once that's done the maybe. thing will fall down and i don't boom. think i don't th- there's no there was no accurate thing like they were like oh if you're in berserk mode you it takes approximately five minutes in order for you to cool off or whatever the fuck there was nothing mentioned of that which is why i didn't think that that's what he was doing perhaps he was but the main thing was that he was timing from the time that he shot it up in in the air until the time that it landed um that's what he was timing and so after the whole nuclear explosion cost and he manages to survive the nuclear explosion he basically explains that he took the idea from uh from a a satellite in his past life on earth um being able to shoot fucking rods of of like of death down onto earth but they could never accomplish it because of the fact that the materials they had um would just burn up in the atmosphere or they wouldn't they would just you know it would be inaccurate even if they did that so even though he said that the 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 spell is kind of inaccurate um using like all of his special powers he's able to make the metal um and make it as accurate as he can based off of like he used like he used his lead powers he used his wind powers he used his fire powers he also also he he also he tested this on the abandoned abandoned island yes that we saw in arte i think where that maha yeah that that maha showed them yeah 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 that's what he was doing on the island at first we think like oh he's just going on vacation with uh with tarte you know getting some getting some manko but no that wasn't the case he was fucking blowing the fucking shit out of the island up um and so anyway needless to say satanta is fucking dust complete dust and all passed out (laughs) passes out um and then he wakes up to um to uh Dia basically saying, you know, hey, you know, I'm so happy you're here. I'm I'm so happy you're alive. Da 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 da. And they kiss uh, at the uh, at the at the sunrise, which is kind of funny. Kiss his cousin. And uh, now there's like there's no witnesses, so we can say she's dead. No, he said we cannot say she's dead because there are no witnesses to say that she died. I'm about to say like she died. She still has to get a new identity. So they just say like you know. No, but something happened to her. They they kind of they kind of basically it's like no one's here, so go. Yeah, basically, well, well yeah. The, the the dad was gonna make something up. Yeah, the dad said he was gonna make something up, and so basically they go their separate ways. Uh, Dia and and uh, Luke go back Returned. to um Lu- to Tuaha. Father goes a separate way, and basically they live happily ever after. A couple days later, uh, we see. Well, that- before that though, uh, they said uh for now on she's gonna be your actual. Yeah, that's, sister, what, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, 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 all that happened a couple days later. So okay, basically, I thought that they, happened when they got there, but yeah. No, okay. no, 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 no. So basically, they got there. Everybody's happy to see each other. They're all reunited. Um, they live. You know, the deal is like you know, reading books, and they're they're having dinner together and smiling, and everybody's happy. A couple of days after that, this is a, it's an after credit scene. So in an after credit yeah. scene, um, a couple of days later, everybody gathers inside of um Luke's father's office. And as they they basically said like, hey, so um, from now on, your Dia's gonna live as your as your baby sister. And he's like, what do you mean? Like she's two years older than me. Like, well, she's a she's a um she's, she's a Falcone, young, and she's small, and you know she looks and looks, young, and, and looks young as hell. Yeah, so that it'll work. Trust me. And he's like, okay, so she'll li- live as your baby sister, which means he's gonna basically be secretly fucking his sister. But we digress. Um, and then the second part, which is the major news. Yeah, that the, the father tells Luke that by the, the way, hero, the hero's here. The hero is in uh, in our kingdom, and he's like, What fuck? And so basically we find out Satanta wasn't the hero, and that the, the real hero is this fucking Epona. Yeah, he's like a little blonde kid and he, he looks very like, you know, sincere. He looks very nice. So I'm very curious to know how like this little kid that looks very nice is going to be the cause of the destruction of the world, according to the goddess. Or maybe not. 
Maybe it'll be just uh, maybe he's not. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if she if he's not. As a, as a fan, I from what I remember, the hero's a girl, and I oh, feel like yeah, and I feel like she's gonna snap when the goddess kills Luke. But that's probably why she goes on that destructive path. Oh, so well, you're you're already revealing a lot. Well, I, that's my assumption. So does he fuck the hero? As, as a, I don't know. That's funny. Because uh, yeah. the, the fact that I found out that it's a girl, that's my assumption about probably what's going to happen. She probably falls in love with Luke. Luke dies because he can't kill her. And then she goes, and then that's where she snaps to kill that world. Well, that's don't forget, they're still in play because Luke is like, hey, what if I can, like, you know, convince her not to kill the world without. Uh, yeah, that's dying. another thing, too. And the, the guy and uh, the goddess is like, well, that's an option, but I doubt that'll happen. But, but I, I, it's like, I really rather you didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, basically. I kind of I kind of want you to kill the hero. <laughs> basically, I really think that it's going to be the it's going to be them two against the goddess. Yeah, I well, think the well, goddess is evil. I, I, yeah, that's right. As, I, I, that, that's face. It kind of gives that when the OP when Luke's like pointing the gun at her. Basically, the goddesses. And then you also see like the way she acts and like the way she looks and like talks when she's not in front of these. People. And, and it's like, how many heroes are there? Have there been? Like, like all all the like all these years, like years, multiple years, like even like cause no way the hero was born when like, like 30 yeah. years ago. You know, it'd be kind of funny, but not if they like introduce like this is the multiverse. <laughs> this, would, this, would be a down, this would be a downgrade. Uh, I think I, I think we're definitely getting a season two. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We're getting a season two. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll, 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 we'll get the next arc where Luke meets the hero. Uh, four out of five. I gave it a five. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly from the beginning of this show to the end of this show. Thoroughly enjoyed this show. I gave it a five out of five. I, I love this. <laughs> I, I it's highly ranked in my top. It I loved it. Everything I love. I love I love everything about fucking about uh what's it called? Uh, great OP, great ending, great characters. It's a, yep. it's it's probably one of better harem types. Yep. Uh, yeah, it is yeah, actually I, when you think of when you think of a harem anime, like you think of like a slice of life that's comedy based, or you think of this, which greatly exceeds any other shonen type of harem that I could think of that I've seen. I'm sure there's others that may be better or maybe comparable, but in terms of harm, but like, like, seen, like, like, like all the characters are enjoyable. Not yeah. Like, and it's not etch. It's not even etchy based. Like it, there's etchy, but it's tasteful. It's very, ta- it's sensual. It's not even sexual to that aspect. It's very sensual. It's, just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just their figures. That's really it. You know, like, <laughs> It's a harem where sex isn't a, 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 the, the plot, the main one of the main plots. Sex is yeah. just a, a, a garnish to the plot, which is mainly about the action and the isekai. Right. So I love it. Five out of five. Yeah. No, this is great. Um, yeah. I can't wait for season two. Same. All right. We got two left. I've lost track at this point. OK. Yeah, we, we got uh, tax. My fucking God. <laughs> We had such high hopes. We had a good run, and now this shit happens. And you know what? it's not a slap in the face. We, we, you know, as much as you and I are disappointed, I don't. I'm not disrespected. Like I'm not disrespected the way I was. I, I, like I, ha- I, I, I think I'm overall, I think, I think overall, I had more issues than you did. <laughs> you did, yeah. You had far more issues than than I did on it. I don't feel nearly as disrespected, like I said, as I did at the end of Wonder Egg. Yeah. I don't feel as disrespected the way they let down. Um, it felt like a cop out. <laughs> it was very, it was meh. I agree. It was a very meh ending. Um, it was not very coherent in terms of how it went from one scene to the other scene. Um, it left more questions than answers. And at the end of the day, the principle of the show is to to, to get the game over because yeah. the story is based yeah, off. Because the, the, the game takes place after this. Yeah, but yeah, the way they ended it, it could have been. Right, yeah, let's let let let's get to that. Uh, it, it, we basically get where we left off. Tact and Destiny are fighting uh, Orpheus. Orpheus, yes, yes, they're fighting Orpheus. And then uh, during all this, uh, we get a Sangin flashback, and you find out why he's evil. You want to know why he's evil? He got why tired he of, evil, Matt. He got tired of fucking working. Everyone kept dying while you're trying to save them, and let to the point like I can't do this anymore. I can't save them. You know how I'm gonna save them? I'm gonna lock the continent, killing everyone there while locking up the D two and sacrificing myself. Exactly, and it's just like we don't have a way to beat these guys. Like, yeah, you do. You have the music arts. You're just mad that there's casualties. That's I'm gonna create more casualties. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, it's a fucking cliche shit, and it's just not interested. So I don't give a fuck about this guy. Yes, like, I you got. Know what? Like, I fine. 
Go fight. Go die. I don't care. Sagan. Do. Yeah, Sagan turned out to be a putz. And it's like, what the? Like, that's not interesting. There's nothing good about any of that. Yeah. So I was like, I thought he was just gonna be this complex villain the whole time. But I was like, no. Yeah, it's... I thought. You know, I thought he was gonna like have like interaction. Like, I thought. You know what I really thought? I thought he was gonna have have some sort of interaction with like a grand music heart, and the music heart fucked him, and so now he's using the music. Yeah, heart. like 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 tax father or something. Yeah, it's like you know, like yeah, tax father like rejected even something stupid like tax father rejected him to be part of his fucking orchestra. Right. That would have been a little bit better than what we got. You know, like I wanted to be part of your father's orchestra, but your father said I wasn't good enough. And so I studied and I studied and I studied and I studied and I saw Lenny and Lenny fucking got over him as his um, as his uh, trainer. And I should have been me. It should have been me. Dolph Ziggler should have yeah. been me. And so I said, fuck it. I'm just going to, you know, use my power. Ding. Death. Yes, I've got my revenge. And then now I've, you know, I've become uh, addicted to this. This is this power, the ability to draw D2s and destroy people's and, lives. And, and, or it's like, maybe that maybe the D2s are a good thing type of ordeal. Yeah, or they could have spun not, like, not None of that. But anyway, Orpheus keeps healing. That None of Destiny moves are working. So she tells Tax, go on ahead. Yep. I'll fight her on my own. No, before and- you do that, before she does that, they basically, again, like Matt said, none of her moves are working. None, they're trying, 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 shooting, shooting, shooting. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. And so Tact basically sneaks up behind Orpheus, fucking try, basically karate kicks the shit out of Orpheus. Like caught her lovely, caught that bitch lovely with a kick. And then Orpheus like, you think this fucking bothers me? Yeet. And fucking yeeted yeah. fucking yeeted and he, tack and into the that, fucking and wall. And now his hair is slowly gr- growing white. <laughs> no, that happens at, during the conversation with Sagan. Oh, oh no, I thought it happened before that. Oh, during that. No, okay. it happens during the conversation with Sagan. Okay. But okay. you know, in theory, you just got yeeted at like a hundred miles an hour into a storm. While he's while he's dying, by the way. While you're dying, should that not incapacitate you? No. Yeah, that doesn't. definitely that definitely should have. But uh, plot, because plot. Yeah. Yeah, now we get to tax yes. like, all right, I'm gonna go fight Sagan. I'm gonna get him alone. And Destiny's like, yeah, I got RPS from here. No problem. And so they take out swords and they start sword fighting. <laughs> sword fighting. But but you wanna know, <laughs> but you wanna know how this ends, Ethan. Get you these hands. Know, get these fucking hands. And it's just he gave that bitch up. hands. Yeah, so guns, sword, nothing, just punching the shit out of her. And she Orpheus gets weak. And then I guess the point she punches him in the face and she dies. But so we don't officially know that because of the fact that in between the fight, the, the hands fight with Orpheus and and um Yeah, but like like her body looked like she was like growing white. I will you that. know something? As much as we didn't get a satisfying conversation with Toth and, and Sagan, I did like the interaction with Orpheus and Destiny as they were going back and forth. I didn't mind that because Orpheus is basically trying to follow um, Sagan's orders and trying to justify Sagan's ideology. And I can understand that from a music arts perspective as you grow and you grow bonds with your music arts. So I didn't have a problem at all whatsoever with the interactions back and forth between yeah. Destiny and and, and, um, and Orpheus um, from that aspect. But we don't really officially see as much as Matt is describing what we see, which is basically she punches the bitch in the face and she dies eventually. Um, we don't officially know that that's what occurs what we but, but do, she but she's she's still incapacitated yeah she's she? still incapac- at minimum she's still incapacitated and so basically the conversation tack manages to find um sagan inside of the the, the core of the chamber and they have a, a fucking back and forth about life about um music about you know like the the, the power of music and the you know the t- desire of the human race blah 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 Eventually, Sagan is like, "Oh, I'm gonna take over the world," and oh, you know, something shit like that. And fucking Tak is like, "No, you're not." Fuck you fucking, are. Yeah, fuck you are. And he fucking slices through fucking Sagan, killing Sagan. And um, at this point, he's joined by Destiny, and we see an incapacitated Orpheus. And he's joined by Destiny, and when he slices through Sagan, um, with uh, Destiny's sword. Um, everything collapses, the hive collapses, all the D2s dissipate because of the fact that the hive is dead, because Sagan is dead, and they end up randomly on a fucking beach. Ran yeah. so com- yeah. that that part was like, huh? Literally, it went from like oh and, and it, collapsed, and oh, it's just down together, and, he, and he's humming the song. Yeah. So we never see this this masterpiece that he's working on in action he's to fight Orpheus. 
and uh, Destiny is like, oh, Maestro, like, what song is, uh, what's something? And he's like, oh, he's like, oh, he's like, we have to go. But she basically, Maestro is like, oh, you know, once we get back, you know, a lot of work is going to have to be done. You know, we're not going to have a lot of time. And Destiny is like, yeah, what about your song? And Maestro is like, oh, my song's already done. Like, you know, I just got to put it, I just got to put it on paper, but it's done. And he's just, I was like, oh, oh, good. I wish, you know, you composed it during the fight, you know. That would have been cool. That would have been nice. But no. Uh, and it's like, I'm going to take a nap. And that wake me closes, up when closes. Yeah. And then he closes his eyes and you think he's dead. Yep. And then Destiny leans in to kiss him and he sa- she says, I love you. And then disappears. So Destiny is the one that's gone. Destiny is the one that's gone. And then you see Anna and everyone and see tax bodies like, where get him. Yeah, put him in the in the the low temperature chamber or something. Basically, they freeze Tox so they can cure him and or or find or find a way yeah, to kill him. Yeah. See at the time that Destiny disappears, that something is in his hand. Something is in um in Tox's hand, but we don't know what it is. Tox has got I, his. I think, as a as a thing, because that gave her when before she turned into that. Yeah, uh, it's it's guy. it's Cosette's ne- it's Cosette's necklace. We see yeah. it's Cosette's charm on the necklace. Which Anna has now. <laughs> Anna has now. But you, we see Anna as a uh, first uh, as a a composer. Like she's a composer now. Like she has a uniform. Yes. And Titan is with a uh, lot, like like carrying her, like pushing her around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened to Walkire. Walkire, you know, it, they could have done something crazy. Like you know what would have been awesome. And, and all the other music, and all the other music arts we saw. <laughs> You know, it would have been awesome if Takt was like, you know, was like Sagan, where he could control like heaven and hell. He should have been able to like, at, at minimum, control Walkure and Destiny. And then that would have been even doper if he would have been able to like, okay, well, you know, Lenny's gone. So let me form a contract with you, Titan. And then he, she, he has a three-headed beast of Pretty the three girls. That would have been gangster. But none, none of those happened. <laughs> no. And basically the end of the, of the series shows... Anna is wearing the necklace and Anna turns into destiny. destiny. And so destiny is still alive within the necklace to be called upon whenever Anna needs help. We basically Anna is her own conductor. Yeah. Um, her own She's her own. You want to know who did the final song, right? With the big climatic showdown to like to have the sacrifice. Fucking Vivi. Vivi. Yeah. But, that what I was talking about, like she had that final song. She was working on the final song for the Singularity Project. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and she fucking sang it at the end before she died. Yeah, we had that. But this one was ah, fuck the song. I'm just gonna hop it you on know, the beach. Heard the song like. We could have heard like some sort of song on it. Like, you know, it would have been great if like, oh, like, you know, it would have been cool if Tak had secretly produced it and like somebody like found out, like, you know, like go inside of the the, the dresser inside of Tak's room and you'll find the song. And we hear the song being played as like a montage of like the series comes up or we see Anna and she's walking or whatever or training or something like, you know, and we hear the song as this goes fades off into the end. That wouldn't have been bad. I would have liked that. But yeah, and now it's buy my game. Yeah, it's buy the game and find out more. I, I give it a three. I had it at a five and I lowered it to a five. Animation's good. Fantastic. Just some Animation's of the characters- fantastic. The story up until the end wasn't bad. I know there are there, people there, 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 the, story. the story was just mediocre. It wasn't bad. And, and I liked some of the characters, just not all of them. Like Destiny was so wind up one dimensional until near the end. Yeah, and Tat, and Tat, we didn't know about why he was miserable, or like why he kept playing the piano till like halfway through the season. I didn't mind that though. I did not. And, and Anna's Anna. Anna's Anna. We don't get much on Anna. And Lenny's um, great. We didn't still get enough of him. We needed more of Lenny. I would have loved more Lenny. Yeah, we got tight in as well. I I didn't mind. The, the, to, Lenny's story is the best story of the series. Yeah, because so it's I, the most I, complete story. Yeah, and I wanted more of that. Uh, Heaven was hyped up to be the strong one, but not not really. No, it was hell. Yeah, it hell was, was stronger than heaven. Yeah, because hey, again, the heaven was hyped up to be like one of the, the strongest ones, but turns out she just mediocre. Because all she has is a fucking umbrella gun. Tommy God, yeah. Well, yeah well, Titan, Tommy gun. Meanwhile, well, fucking well, Titan destroyed her <laughs> technically. Yeah, and meanwhile, fucking hell has got the the tuning fork. Roller blades, fucking. <laughs> fucking uh blades literal blades on her roller blade with fucking martial arts all righty should we get to all right should... all right should we finish off part one all righty uh taisho otome fairy tale 
Wait, we didn't. Did we do jobless? We didn't do jobless. That was last week. We did. We, we finished it. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're done. They're done. This... I don't know why I'm saying we're gonna talk about jobless. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bushuko and uh, Mariko finished last week. <laughs> I'm thinking with those two. Yeah. All right, my bad. Yeah. Well, so yeah, all we got is a Tommy left. So. Go men, go men. As you like. All right. All right, all right. You, I'll let you take charge. Just keep it, keep it under minimum. That's not twenty minutes. Oh God. Um, Taisho. Yeah. So, um, basically, the episode um starts off with um with a recap of um of Yuzu and what she went through um during the um during the the, the earthquake, and so we see her um kind of like walking in a dish she's walking in the snow she's kind of lost she recaps everything throughout this recap she's missing tamahiko 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 thinking about tamahiko thinking about tamahiko and she is filled with regret she is regretful that she didn't get to tell tamahiko how much she loves him and how much yeah, she because she thinks she's dying <laughs> yeah because then we ba- basically gives off the the to the watcher that like she's dying and she thinks she's dying and so you know throughout this point like she's lost she and she's like and we see her write the the letter that he found um at, at the house and he's like oh when i get back um i'll tell him on his birthday how much i love him and again throughout this point like you just see her like walking in snow falling over and as she's like depressed and going through all the stuff and you see her like when the time is she collapsed after she saved the kids and she's whispering tamahiko sama tamahiko sama there's a reply back yuzu 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 and he she hears it and she starts running in the snow starts running towards a light yuzu 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 she's running and she's running and she's running and she's running and the light comes out and she wakes up from her coma and you see tamahiko standing over her yuzu 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 and she opens her eyes and she just begins to bawl and i got a little emotional she begins to bawl she bawls crying and and tamahiko's like i'm so happy you're alive yuzu i'm so happy and she's like tamahiko sama she's like yeah that's i'm here that's me i'm here and he's like i love you i love you so much i love you so much i love you so much and then you know she's like ah, he's like ah, i love you too i love you too and she kisses tamahiko like so, with such passion and love and relief because she's alive and her man is there with her it was beautiful 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 shit and then meanwhile everyone is like oh my god like everyone's happy and then they realize like oh everybody's there and tamahiko's embarrassed and yuzu is like why and she's like uh we're not home and she goes huh and she looks over and she sees all her friends there and then she becomes super embarrassed and then he's like why are you embarrassed now <laughs> it's kind of funny but anyway they're really happy you know everybody's there she's you know everybody's good we're all good um midori's good everybody is good the kids are good all the kids are good everybody's good and then we see in a shocker uh tamahiko's father shows up and was like oh like i'm glad you're here i found out you were here because i called your office you weren't around um and you're like oh you're getting awful close to tamahiko i thought i told you he was dead to us like literally right in front of his fucking son he's like I thought, yeah that <laughs> he's like yeah i thought i told, told you he was dead to us and he's like oh you know you're being you know you're not being uh considerate da, 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 da. he's like it doesn't matter anyway he's like my son my only son He's injured because of the earthquake. I need you to take care of him. Get in the limo. Let's go. And he's like, no. He's like, I'm not going to do that. He's like, I'll write you a referral to a doctor who will help him. But no. And he basically looks down on everybody there. He's like, these people don't need you. He's like, let the other doctors handle them. Like, he looked at them with, like, disgust. Like, ugh. Like, ugh. You, like, you fucking pores. I always laugh at that. Like, fucking pores. But no, like, in this series, like, in this scenario, he's just basically like, these fucking pores. Let the fucking shitty little doctors handle him. Whatever. Ugh. He's like, come help my son. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm a, here's your referral. Go talk to this doctor. He'll help you out with your son. And he's like, fine. And he's like, let's walk away. And you also see Tamahiko's old uh, sister. I don't know if it's older sister or like a younger sister, but she's a bitch too. She's a complete and absolute fucking C word. So I can't say the word. Thanks to Sean. She's an absolute C word. Totally deserving of that, of that moniker, in my opinion. Um, And they're like, all right, whatever. And they start to walk away. And uh, Tamahiko musters up the courage to, to to look at him and he's like you know father and his father stops and doesn't even turn around and he's like father I, I'm, I'm glad you're well right and he just like stops and like thinks for a second and he's like Ugh. and he fucking keeps walking he's like, I'm like i'm sorry who are you yeah right and he's fucking this poor talking to me like not, that's not even your own son just this fucking poor um and that's that and so um basically yeah basically um they go back after a while everything's good they head back to the place 
and um uh, what's it called they they the, the girls are getting like some festive festive thing getting yeah some guy sorry they're getting some festive thing they're going and we find out the boys are um at an onsen and the girls had just come from an onsen so the boys are at an onsen and you know we see tamahiko and um and what's his face um uh, uh hikaru yep um he's there and the other the other boys are there uh rio's brothers are there and uh we find out basically like you know like hey the time he goes like you know thank you for keeping up your end of the bargain you know like i'm sure the adults are grateful i'm grateful for you like it was a nice like thank you that he gave them and meanwhile we see um yuzu and tamahiko i'm sorry yuzu and uh tamako and rio they're all getting this like festive like thing going and um as yuzu's cleaning uh rio goes up to her and is like hey you know i apologize for being such a bitch you know like i did something really bad and i shouldn't have done that and i affected you guys you and tamahiko and i'm sorry and yuzu's like you know it doesn't matter like i've forgiven you ages ago there's nothing to forgive anymore because i really like you like it was a nice wholesome thing and so the boys get back and it's a surprise birthday party it's a late birthday party for For tamahiko for tamahiko and you know tamahiko is extremely emotional and um everybody parties and all's well that ends well and in an after credit scene we see yuzu and tamahiko pray at the the shrine up on top of the the at the top of the forest um within the tree and uh, again yuzu recaps how much she loves tamahiko and tamahiko says you know one day i want to grow to be like you and in order for me to grow like you first i have to cherish you and i promise to cherish you forever and they kiss as the as the the cherry blossoms the soccer tree fucking blows by in the wind and i don't know whether we'll get a season two but that was a decent way to end the show i loved it i loved it yeah, th- this was enjoyable i'm so glad you picked this up matt i'm so glad I yeah gave- I gave it a four out of five. Yeah, just didn't because of the fact like it's a bit childish to a certain extreme. Like there, yeah, is, that that was kind of why I gave like a three and a half. Or if, if I did, if I did quarters, it'd be three point seven five. Yeah, uh, I de- I definitely like the romance of it. I yes, say I love the romance, and like I said, it's a little bit childish from that aspect, but it was a beautiful romance regardless um i gave it a four out of five i enjoyed yeah. it very much and it just uh, even the other stuff beyond the romance just the, the historical aspect i was so happy and shocked when they brought up an actual historical like thing that happened the great Kanto earthquake of 1923 where over 100,000 people died in japan um right. 8.3 magnitude earthquake struck uh somewhere i forget where it is and it, they said the earthquake lasted up to 11 minutes which is fucking nuts. Imagine shake an 8.3 shake for 11 minutes. That's fucking crazy. And, but right. the fact that it was historically accurate and produced and shown in like a, a pretty decent way that elevated it as well for me, as far as I'm concerned to a four. I love uh, it. Still very good. That is it for part one. Yes, indeed. About two hours. 